Hey guys, Mr. Burns here again, and uh, I'm bringing you uh, another video, and this one I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how you find uh, either a sine or cos equation from a transformed graph. Okay, so again, this is one where uh, one where it often shows up on a common exam. I think most likely the form of it from just from past exams it'll be in the form of a word problem but here I just have a I just have a um, a graph now for 2204 most often graphs given to you for 2205 there's no graph you have to draw so maybe I will go through another video there for 2205 where you have a situation where you have to draw that graph all right so again but you know it stays the same for any transformations most often than not we're writing out this HT um, it keeps doing that for some reason. H T B T H S V S and R E F. All right. So what I have here is things that I can get from the graph. Okay. So after you get that done, the first step is to draw your sinusoidal axis. Okay. Your sinusoidal axis is the line that basically cuts the so, uh, the sine right in half here. Okay, so uh, or cos curve, depending on what we're finding here. Actually, I'm going to find it in terms of sine first. Then I'm going to do it in terms of cos and show you that it really isn't that much difference. Remember, there's basically an infinite number of ways we can write this um, if we had you know a graph that continued on forever. So keep that in mind that you could write it. There's many different ways you can get this right. So all right, so for a sine curve. We want to choose a starting point. So here are some possibilities. For a sine curve, we want to choose a starting point where the graph crosses the sinusoidal axis. Okay? That's our goal. We want to choose a starting point where the graph crosses the sinusoidal axis. So um, again, for this, uh, my starting point is easiest to choose something close to zero. I mean, we can choose it here. We could choose it here. We can choose it here. Any one of these points, perfectly fine. So uh, my HT. It's always going to be where whatever starting point we choose is going to be my x value. So if you look here, this is my starting point. It's uh, 0 on the x-axis. So my ht is going to be 0. Okay. Um, if we chose it here, my ht would be negative 360. If I chose it here, it would be negative 720. Doesn't matter. Any one of these points, perfectly fine. My vt is always my sinusoidal axis. This is my sinusoidal axis, and it goes through 3. So this is 3. So my VT is my sinusoidal axis. Okay, that's pretty important. My HS, I'll come back to my HS in a second. My VS is my amplitude. Okay, so my amplitude is distance from the sinusoidal axis up to here, okay, um, and that's 2, all right, so my Vs is 2, okay, so just the distance from the middle of the graph to the top, to the max, or the distance from the middle of the graph to a min, same distance, 2, and my RF depends on where I pick my starting point. If I start for sine, if I pick my starting point right here, then I immediately start going uphill, then it's no reflection, okay, so I got no reflection. But like if I chose this point right here and I immediately start going downhill, that would be yes reflection. And it all has to do with uh, how sine starts, the base graph of y equals sine x starts. Sine x starts going uphill, so that would be a reflection, or a no reflection, sorry. All right, my hs, there's actually a formula for my hs. My hs is equal to my period. Divided by 360. And this is a pretty important formula to know. Okay, so my period is 720. So look, starts here, I go up, I go back down, I come back up again, I start right where here, I start over again. So my period is 720. So it's going to be 720 divided by 360. So my HS is going to be 2. So my HS is also 2. All right. So I got my five things that I need to be able to write my equation. So here I go, I'm going to write it. So my VS is 1, so it's 1 over 2. My y minus 3 bracket is equal to, and this is a sine curve. Remember, we're doing it in terms of sine. 
So sine. Now HS is 1 over 2. Bracket. And then I have um, X. And because I don't have any HT, I'm not going to put in minus 0, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay? So sine 1 half X. And there's my equation. That's my equation right there. Okay? Done. Done deal. All right? So recognize that, um, you know, this is imp so important. And really all you need to know is these few little facts of where things come from. And you should be able to find them. All right, let's look at the exact same curve. And um, solve it in terms of cos. Okay, so let's get a cos. Um, cos equation. So we got HT, BT, HS, BS, REF. Alrighty, so again, same sign and dance. Let's try our, our um, sinusoidal axis. So recognize uh, sinusoidal axis is the most important thing here to get. Okay. All right, so starting points for cos occur at maxes or mins. So these are my possible starting points for cos. Okay. Alrighty. So my HT comes from the uh, starting point for cos. So if I chose here, I'd be here. So that would be uh, what, negative, well, we add negative 720 plus 180, so whatever that gives you. And then I have, uh, would be here. Here, so there's negative 180, positive 180, and so on. Okay, so those are my possible starting points. All right, so that's the important thing to give you. All right, so I mean, it makes sense to either start here or here. Generally, I want to start at a max. The reason I want to start at a max is because cos, the base graph of y equals cos, always starts at a max. If I start at a min, it's a reflection, so I have to worry about a negative. So I'm going to start at a max, and I'm going to say no reflection. Okay, um, my uh, sinusoidal axis gives us my VT, just like in the previous equation, uh, previous problem. My HS is still um, new, period, uh, new period over old period, or 720 over um, 360, so that's still 2. My vertical stretch is still my amplitude, okay, so that's my vertical stretch there, which is 2. Now my HT changes, okay, my HT changes because... Uh, if you look here, this is my starting point. So if you look down to my x-axis, this is uh, 180. So my HT, this is the starting point I'm choosing. So I'm going to say my HT is 180. Okay? So the only possible changes you can have between a sine and a cos curve is a HT and a reflection. Okay? So recognize that the sine and cos curve are just... Um, a horizontal translation of each other, so to say, right? Let's just shift it one way or the other, okay? So once we have this, we write our equation. All right, so we get 1 over 2 for my HS, and then I have Y minus 3 is equal to cos, and then I got my HS, which is 1 over 2, X minus 180, something like that. 1 over 2, x minus 180, and again, we are done. All right, and that's my equation. So recognize finding a cos curve and a sine curve, very much the same thing. All right, guys, hope that made sense. Uh, any questions, see me. Thank you very much.